There's nothing better than finding something at the side of the road that you know you can bring home, upcycle, and turn it into something beautiful again. I found this dresser drawer that's really old, looks like it's an antique, and these scrap pieces of plywood. I'm gonna pull this all together and make something beautiful. It needed a really good sanding, so I took it outside, I used my 80 grit sandpaper, and I gave the entire drawer a really good sand. And let me tell you, I just invested in this Ryobi cordless sander, and wow, I love it. To have that freedom to sand wherever you want, just with a battery, is an excellent tool. Now I'm gonna cut two shelves for the inside of the drawer. I'm using this really ugly pink plywood that I also found with the dresser drawer, but that doesn't matter because we're going to paint it later. So I'm just going to measure it so it fits on the inside of the drawer and I'm going to create two shelves. I'm gonna use my level so I have it nice and straight. And then once I have them all cut out, I'm gonna be ready to cut them so they'll fit on the inside of our drawer. I just purchased this also, and it is a cordless skill saw. And I've been slowly buying cordless tools for my shed so I can have the freedom of moving around with the tools and not being tied to having to plug them in and I love them. I'll put these tools, uh, the link down in the description if you wanna check them out. I really am loving the Ryobi skill saw and the sander. Once I have those cut out, I'm just gonna make sure that I measure them properly and they're gonna fit on the inside of the drawer. Now, I am not a woodworker or a carpenter. I kind of just do these projects by the seat of my pants and I love the rustic look so I don't get too worked up about it being absolutely perfect. If you're new to doing projects like this, don't be intimidated, just jump in and give it a try. Now, I wanna paint these shelves with some black homemade chalk paint. I love making my own chalk paint. It's much more affordable than buying store-bought. I'll put the link down below in the description for my recipe that I love. Once they're completely dry, I'm going to place them in the drawer and measure them so they're exactly where I want them to be. Home Depot had a fantastic sale on all of their Ryobi tools and I couldn't pass up on this air nailer. My last air nailer was corded and I was really limited to where I can use it. So this is a real treat being able to take it wherever I need it. I made some marks on the outside of the drawer of where the shelf is so I can nail it with my air gun and it's going to secure those shelves right in place. Once I had the shelves all tacked in, I thought it needed a piece of trim on the front. Because this is just plywood, it's got that really yucky face on the front. I had this in my stash, it's just a piece of scrap wood, and I'm going to use my nailer and attach it to the front of that plywood. Now that it's all put together, I'm going to seal it all up with some polyurethane. This is a water-based. I'll put the link to this down in the description. I really love this as a durable top coat. And I couldn't believe as I was applying it how much it really brought out the wood grain and made it pop. So always have your eyes on the lookout for old furniture, even stuff that's broken, because this was probably from a dresser that had been broken but I was able to save one of the drawers and the outcome of this is just gorgeous. Perfect spot to put some of your books or your knickknacks and I love the way the one side has the door front still. What do you guys think? I think this was really worth pulling it into my vehicle off the side of the road. Now we're gonna tackle this stool. It was really dated, it had ugly, ugly fabric on the top, 
but the base was solid wood and I just love that it had the little compartment on the inside. So I started removing the fabric and somebody had even used some painter's tape to hold the fabric on and the staples weren't even in all the way. And once I started taking this all apart and removing the foam cushion, I realized it was just a piece of cheap plywood and I didn't want to reuse that for this stool. I wanted it to be a piece of solid wood. It just, I'll save this for another project, but I have a piece of pine that's the same width as this piece and I'm gonna trace it out and make a new top for this little stool. I always save scrap pieces of wood and put them in a little corner in my shed for projects exactly like this because you never know what you're going to need. And I'm glad that I saved this piece of pine and it was the exact size that I needed for this stool. Got out my skill saw and I cut it to the size of the original top of the stool. And then I'm going to go in with my sander and I'm gonna clean up the edges and then we're ready to put a stain on this piece of pine. I think originally there was probably a handle on the front of the stool, so I got out my wood filler and I filled in those two holes. I'll set it aside, I'll let it dry, and then I'm going to spray paint the base of this stool. I'm using my satin black spray paint and I'm just doing light strokes across that entire base of the stool. I'm going to do one light coat and then I'm gonna go back and do a second coat. I love to DIY my own stain, and this is just instant coffee and some warm water. I've mixed it really well together. I've just got a rag, and I'm applying it to the top of that pine that we cut. And you can see it really makes the grain pop in the wood, and I just love the color of it, and it's affordable. It's a cheap alternative to going out and buying a stain. You can make it darker by adding more coffee or lighter, and it's a really neat technique to just play around with. Now we've got the base painted with those two coats of spray paint, and now I wanna distress it a little bit. You know I love that distressed look. I can't help myself. So I'm going in with my sander, and I've got my 80 grit sandpaper, and I'm just sanding all around the edges and anywhere where it would have naturally aged. Once it was all sanded, and remember it had the two holes there for the handle, I think I'm gonna put the handle back on. I went in my stash, I have all kinds of handles and knobs, found one that I thought I liked, I put it back on the front and then I got my coffee stain and I stained over that entire base of the stool to give a tinted color to anywhere where I would have sanded. I'm gonna seal everything up with my polyacrylic spray sealer, add the new top to the stool and this is what I created. I actually think that this is gonna be a fantastic place to store candles and use it like a riser in my kitchen. I just absolutely love the way that it turned out and what a transformation from the before with that ugly fabric. Another roadside find that I'm going to upcycle. I found this old mirror on the side of the road. The glass was not broken. I'm gonna turn it into a mirror and I'm gonna use a fantastic product to create the mirror effect on the glass. So make sure you watch this whole project. But I wanted to give it a little bit more of a farmhouse distressed feel. So I got out my paint stripper and I'm going to not remove all the paint, but remove some of it. I put the paint stripper on set it aside and let it do its magic and then I'm going to scrape away some of that paint. When you're doing a project like this, you wanna make sure you're doing it in a really well ventilated area. As you can see, I'm outside, but I still have my respirator on and gloves. I let this sit for about a half an hour and then I went in with my scraper and I'm gonna start removing the paint. Because I was going for that rustic farmhouse feel, I left some of that paint on. Once I got it to how I really liked it, I took it out and I got my pressure washer and I rinsed off all of that paint thinner and I really love the way that it looks now. 
Now I want to seal it all up with a polyurethane. I'm using this polyurethane. It's a water-based, so you can clean it up with water afterwards. And we're going to seal up all of that wood on the frame. When you're doing projects like this, you always want to make sure you're testing the paint to make sure it's not lead. I did check this and it was fine. Uh, you can buy a little kit on Amazon to test for that. I'll put the link down below in the description. That way you can take precautions if you found a project like that and you're wanting to upcycle it. I'm cleaning the glass really well with some Windex because now comes the fun part to turn this glass into a mirror with a special spray paint. You want to do this technique on the back side of the glass. So I'm flipping my window over and we are going to use this mirror effect spray paint by Rust-Oleum. You can find this at Home Depot, your, maybe your local hardware store or on Amazon. And you're also gonna need some vinegar and a spray bottle and you're gonna mix a ratio of one to one water and vinegar in the spray bottle. Now I'm gonna mask off the window so we don't get any of that spray paint on any of the wood. Rust-Oleum Mirror Effect spray paint is a special kind of paint that makes things look like mirrors. When you put it on a smooth surface like glass or plastic, it gives a shiny reflective finish, just like a mirror. Now that we have it all taped off, I'm going to get that mixture of vinegar and water and I'm gonna spray it all over the glass. We're creating a antique vintage looking mirror with this process. If you just want a flat mirror, you don't have to do this step, but I wanna make it look antique. I am then going to spray that spray paint on top of that vinegar and water and try to do it as even as you can, covering that whole piece of glass. You don't wanna put it on very thick, you just want light strokes. Then we're gonna let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute, let that spray paint dry, and then we're going to go in with a paper towel and we're gonna dab up and down. Anywhere where there was water and vinegar, the spray paint is not going to stick to it and it's gonna give that bubbled antique mirror look. You can imagine the possibilities with this product, even buying frames at the thrift store and upcycling them into beautiful decorative mirrors. Now, depending on the look that you're going for, I always like to put on two or three coats of this product. I'm spraying again with that vinegar and water solution and then going over in an opposite direction that I did the first time with that spray paint. Now you wanna use a dark colored spray paint on the back of that mirrored surface coated with that Rust-Oleum Mirror Effect spray paint. It enhances the mirror effect. The dark paint serves as like a backdrop that helps to reflect the light back through the mirrored surface and it intensifies the mirror-like appearance. So if you have something that you've thrifted and it has a glass pane in it and you wanna turn it into a mirror, fantastic product to achieve that look with this. Now I'm gonna remove all of that painter's tape and I'm gonna put this out in the sun and let it dry really well. And here's my free window upcycled into a beautiful farmhouse mirror I can hang in my home. And like I said before, if you just want a straight mirror, then skip the step of using the vinegar and water and just spray it on in about three coats and put your black underneath. But I love that kind of bubbled, old vintage look and I think it's very fitting for this distressed frame. I hope you've enjoyed all of today's free roadside find upcycles. I've had a lot of fun creating them. I'd love to know down in the comments which one was your favorite. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video.